Hey folks, my name is Ed Trevers. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest serving in the beautiful parish of St. Margaret of Scotland that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Gwe. Weeks ago, and I apologize, but COVID is rotten. Weeks ago, a friend of ours, Tamara, she sent me an article. And this article was entitled, God Made the Rainbow, Why the Bible welcomes a gender spectrum. No matter where you find yourself on this particular, in this particular conversation, this article will challenge you. I'll include a link to it in the comments, but this article will challenge you. Whether you consider yourself to be an ally or whether you consider yourself to be an opponent, this article will challenge you to see not only people, but all of God's creation. Uh, in, instead of seeing it in, as a series of absolutes, that we see God's creation within a spectrum. The author, who acknowledges that the Bible doesn't speak of a gender spectrum, does offer us that God's creation was formed with a spectrum in mind. That it wasn't a matter of absolutes that God created this or that, God created this or that, God created that or this, but rather God created this and that and everything else that's in between. God created the heavens and the earth, but we know that there's so much more than just the heavens and the earth. There's all that space in the in-between. God created night and day, but we know there's no light switch somewhere that, okay, now it's night, now it's day, now it's night, now it's day. It doesn't work that way. No, there's this, there's this space between night and day that we are always able to, to embrace and explore. And even within the concepts of day and night, there is another wild spectrum of, 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 of what a day consists of. We know that, it's, again, it's not just a light switch where this is night and that's day, but rather the sun rises. And then we can watch the sun climb up into the sky into, into the midday when the heat overtakes us. And then slowly, over the course of the next few hours, drops until it sets with those wonderful colors of reds and oranges and yellows. And we also know that the night isn't just night, it's, it's filled with nuance, with aspects for us to appreciate, stages that we can look forward to. And one of my favorite times of day that I, I rarely ever see, but it's that moment just before the sun rises where everything is dark. Everything is still. Everything is silent. It's, it's the darkest moment. It's the darkest moment of the day. There's so much more to appreciate in God's creation than simply the absolutes, the things that we can easily label. There is so much more nuance to what God has created than simply this or that. There is this huge spectrum in between. And I, and I love the fact that the author brings this forward as a, as a premise because it, it allows us to see individuals in our lives all the people in our lives, rather than just simply being able to label them as this or that, we can say, no, they exist somewhere along the spectrum. They are, they are a nuanced individual with many aspects of their life that we can explore and that we can learn about and that we can find out about. They come from many different places. They've had many different experiences and all of their experience and in all of the things that they've done in their past and where they come from, all of that stuff has, has, has come together and it has culminated in this individual that is in front of me. And tomorrow, if I'm looking really closely, this will be an, a, a different individual again. Now, I know I'm talking well beyond just gender, the gen, a, a person's gender identity. But if we can see creation, nuanced, like it is. And if we can see individuals empathetically and nuanced as they are, 
then surely we can also apply this mentality to gender identification. And we can see people along that spectrum as well. And if we allow ourselves to do that, if we allow ourselves to see God's creation as a spectrum, without absolutes, but rather everything fitting in at some place along that line, that infinitely long, impossibly broad spectrum, then we allow ourselves an opportunity to let our brothers and sisters fit in where they feel they fit in, to be who they feel they are, to love who they know they love. We allow them to be the individuals that they are. We allow that, that person that is bursting forth from within inside of them, desperate to be a part of this world, to be uncovered. We allow them to come and to be a, and, and to know that they are welcomed, that they are appreciated, that they are loved. Because we aren't seeing them within the confines of these absolutes that, that we feel are there. But rather we're seeing them and, and welcoming them as, as another member, another individual, another person who exists along, again, this beautiful, impossibly broad spectrum. That is creation. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that as our hearts, and our minds are open to experiencing and appreciating the nuance that is God's creation, that we would also be able to see, to embrace, to welcome, and to appreciate all of our brothers and sisters well outside of the confines of those absolutes we have been taught, and instead as people, as children of God, who have proudly taken their place within this spectrum. Amen. Nemultus.